There are few cars in American automobile history that are as polarizing as the AMC Gremlin. See, the Gremlin was American Motors' idea of bringing the compact hatchback style of cars that were popular in Europe to the United States with their own American flair. And whether you're in the camp of people that absolutely love the quirky design of the Gremlin, or if you're one of the people that shields their eyes whenever they see one, there is still universally one Gremlin that is undeniably special. It is a car that has faded into the dark recesses of American automotive history to be largely forgotten. But for the few that know about it, they know just how serious of a performance machine that it was. See, this one special AMC Gremlin had the ability to beat up pretty much any brand new production car on the market. This is the story of the AMC Gremlin 401 XR, America's forgotten super hatchback. To truly understand the sheer insanity of the Gremlin 401 XR, we need to go back and take a look at the Gremlin itself and see what made it tick. The Gremlin was introduced by AMC, or the American Motors Corporation, in 1970 as a direct response to the rise in popularity of foreign compact imports. All of the American automakers were jumping into the fray to defend against this. GM with the Vega, Ford with the Pinto, and soon to be AMC with the Gremlin. There was just one problem. American Motors had spent pretty much all of their leftover R&D budget on creating their new car, the Hornet, and also trying to right the sinking ship that was known as Jeep at the time. So AMC had very little money left over to actually create what would become the Gremlin. So they had to get very creative. AMC would create their compact car by taking their new Hornet chassis and cutting a sizable chunk out of it to create the compact platform for the Gremlin. Once they had an overall platform to put the body on, they had to come up with a new shape for the Gremlin, and one that wouldn't cost them an arm and a leg to design and produce. The first sketch of this new AMC compact car was done by AMC's design chief, Dick Teague. Funny enough, this design was sketched out initially on an airline barf bag while he was flying. And while the first sketch was certainly unique. The Gremlin almost looks like the AMC Hornet with the trunk just kind of cut off of it at a 40 degree angle all the way down. It looked unbalanced and honestly pretty strange when compared to even the Ford Pinto, which itself was not a looker. Even the designer of the Gremlin himself said, and I quote, I don't think the Gremlin is going to win any styling awards. But AMC still had the hunch that if the Gremlin looked strange enough to pique people's interest, and get them talking about it, then they would be able to sell a large number of them, especially with the looming gas crisis and the popularization of these small, affordable cars in America. And by 1970, the Gremlin itself hit the streets. And as expected, it caused quite a stir. Lots of people, rightfully so, thought it was hideous. But lots of people also thought it was cool and quirky looking and with just an MSRP of $1,879, the Gremlin was wildly affordable for the masses. The base model Gremlins were available with a series of 200-something cubic inch inline six engines that made between 130 and 150 horsepower. These base model cars were pretty much as plain Jane as they came. In fact, at the base $1,879 price point, you got a hatchback that didn't actually have a rear hatch that opened. You would have to load luggage from the side doors. And starting at around $2,300, the customers that wanted a more well-equipped and quote-unquote sportier version of the quirky hatchback, they could purchase the AMC Gremlin X, which in 1972 became available with the AMC 304 cubic inch V8 as the top-of-the-line engine option. Now, in all reality, by 1972, this stock 304 barely made over 150 horsepower. But being fitted into this strange-looking two-seat hatchback, it was definitely a unique engine combo to be had, and a pretty good number of people would actually go on to order the V8-equipped Gremlin Xs. However, there was an AMC dealership in the middle of Mesa, Arizona, who saw the Gremlin X 
not just as a new model to sell on their lot, but as an opportunity to clone a winning formula at the time and build their own seriously capable version of the Gremlin X, called the Gremlin XR. See, the one thing that is very unique about the V8 lineup at AMC in the early 70s is that the 304 cubic inch V8 that they offered, all the way up to their largest 401 cubic inch V8, were all dimensionally the same on the outside. This meant that any vehicle that could fit a 304 could also fit the much more powerful 401 without any serious modification being required. Randall AMC, who was the AMC dealership in Mesa, Arizona, was known as the performance mecca for AMC cars. These were the go-to guys for modifying AMC products into serious street machines. They also saw the success of other major dealers at the time, like Yanko and Baldwin Motion, who would swap larger factory engines into cars like Camaros and Chevelles and sell them essentially as dealer special models. Randall AMC thought that given the Gremlin's super lightweight and new ability to take a V8 power plant, that they could put AMC's largest 401 offering into the Gremlin and create their own turnkey performance machine. American Motors corporate themselves greenlit this project and shipped Randall AMC 20 401 engines to use in these builds. AMC's 401 engine for the 1972 model year from the factory made about 255 horsepower. Now, this may not have been a lot of power when compared to a 454, but 255 horsepower was not bad for 1972. Where Randall AMC's new Gremlin XR would shine, though, is in the weight department. Curb weights for these Gremlins were only about 2,600 pounds. Compare that to, let's say, a 1972 Camaro, which weighed near 3,400 pounds, the Gremlins did have a clear weight advantage, which allowed them to really make the most of this new 255 horsepower 401 power plant. And at a starting price of $2,999, these 401 equipped Gremlin XRs represented arguably the best value per dollar in terms of speed that you could get in a new car for the period. Out of the box, a 100% stock 401 powered Gremlin XR could turn a high 13 second quarter mile, which was well ahead of the same year Camaro Z28's 14.5 second quarter mile. But that wasn't where the Gremlin XR stopped. No, no, no. Discerning buyers were able to purchase their Gremlin XR with a host of other upgrades, including hotter camshafts, headers, an upgraded exhaust, a new intake, a new AMC twin grip rear end, a four speed manual transmission, and more. Carcraft was able to take one of these well optioned Gremlin XRs in 1972 when they first came out. And when equipped with all the performance mods, they were able to run a 12.3 second quarter mile with it. For 1972, the Gremlin XRs that were fully loaded were wicked fast cars, beating up pretty much every single factory car in 1972 from Z28s all the way up to Ferrari Daytonas and the Top Dog Corvettes. So with the Gremlin XR, not only were you able to put the hurt on pretty much any brand new car at the strip, but you were also able to see the look of disgust on the owner's face after he had just gotten walked by the little ugly Gremlin, which is arguably way more fulfilling. The only problem with this story is that from 1972 to 1974, only about 20 or 21 of these special dealer-built Gremlin XRs were built. Given that AMC only provided Randall AMC with that many extra engines. And today, there's no really good way to tell from the VINs on a Gremlin X to see which cars were actually converted from this dealership into a Gremlin XR. So authenticating which ones of these are actually real is very difficult to do, and let alone finding one of the 20 is almost impossible. Luckily though, if you happen to find a 304 powered Gremlin X somewhere, you can very easily build your own 401 swapped Gremlin XR clone and experience how crazy this little hatchback would have been back in the day. And that is the short story of America's crazy V8 powered hot hatchback.
the AMC Gremlin XR. If you enjoyed this video, we would greatly appreciate it if you could drop a like and also share this video with other enthusiasts. Also, please make sure that you are subscribed to the Rare Cars YouTube channel and smash that notification bell for more documentary style videos just like this on the world's most interesting cars. Until next time, enthusiasts.